Harrison is our pastor emeritus. Uh, he is a great man of God, was a pastor here for 50 years. And, um, you know, most of the time, if you hear about a church and I, I start to say old pastor, but I mean former pastor is still in the congregation, there's always some sort of conflict between him and the pastor. But I want you to know how much I love this man and, and I know that he was the one who preached the night I knew I needed to be saved and baptized me in the February, why I decided in February I'd never know, in Lake Jackson. So how many of y'all were baptized in Lake Jackson? In February. I don't know if that water was cold as it could be. And uh, then, of course, I came and told him one day when I was about 17 that I was called to preach, and he says, I'm not surprised, and it was a shock to me. And then when I walked the aisle, it wasn't maybe two or three months later, I guess, and told the church that I was called to preach. He says, and he's going to preach his first sermon next Sunday night. <laughs> and I nearly fell out on the floor. <laughs> but ever since then, this man has been an encouragement to me and a great blessing. There's been times I know he disagreed with me, but he's wise enough and, and to just encourage me instead. And so I love him to death, and I'm glad he's able to be here today and to preach for us. How many are you looking forward to that? Say amen. amen. All right. And the Bible never said you had to stand up to preach, so he's going to sit and preach today. All right. Brother Madison, you go ahead. Thank you, son. Brother Fred Robbins used to say that First man in the Bible recorded that wore a coat to church. He got stoned to death before he got home, so. <laughs> and I'm offended. I wasn't asked to play the piano. <laughs> or sing a special or nothing. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to be just mean as y'all are. I ain't going to do it. Good to be here. Good to see y'all come back. Are you full as I am? Are you sleepy as I am? <laughs> well, I won't keep you long. <laughs> there was a fellow in church one time, and everything to pay a preacher said, he'd say, Amen. Amen. One day the preacher told some tale on himself, and the old man said, Amen. The preacher said, There's some things that just don't call for an amen. <laughs> what am I going to preach on? Uh, Mary Lou's asked me that for a week. I told her I didn't know. She asked me again, I think it was this morning, because I haven't got an outline. She said, what are you going to preach? I said, I don't know. She said, about time you're finding out. <laughs> and I told her I'd been working on this for three or four weeks, and I have been thinking about it. Brother R.J. asked me, I guess about a month ago, what I was going to preach on. I said, I've got a one-word message. He said, what's that? I said, you. Did you ever figure out what I meant? You're fixing to find out. I've been thinking about this ever since Brother Casey uh, <clears throat> preached on when uh, Jesus fed the 5,000. You remember that sermon? Well, this thought come to me when you were preaching that. I've been mulling it over in my mind ever since. Can't get it off. So I'm going to tell you all about it and you towed it off. <laughs> How's that? Is that all right, Bobby? Okay. 
in the 28th chapter of Matthew. By the way, let me let me say this. Uh, Brother Ed Brown is here, and he's been my friend for how many years, Ed? Long time, wasn't it? He he married way above himself. Y'all know that, don't you? Same as you. I did. Some things just don't call for an amen. Now. Good to see Runt here. I remember him when he was Runt. Him got six head of youngins. That's something, ain't he? He grew it up through his hair. I remember when he had hair. He's always been a runt, though. And I'm glad you stuck with that name. I'm glad it didn't offend you. May have when you was young, but it don't offend you now, and I'm glad of that. But it's good to see them fellas here. Glad you all come. And your wives come with you. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> sort of like, it may be like the fellow said one time, he, his wife went with him everywhere and somebody asked him why. His wife went everywhere with him and he said, cause she'd rather go with me than have to kiss me goodbye. <laughs> so that may be what's wrong with him. <laughs> Your wives would rather go with them than have to kiss him goodbye. In the 28th chapter of Matthew, we find the Great Commission. Y'all know what that is? The Lord said, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Usually, whenever we hear that, when we read that or hear some preacher announce that text, we think of a congregation, don't we? Go ye, all the world. But I want you to look at that. He said, go you and all the world. He brought it down to the personal. Go you and all the world and preach the gospel. You. Well, when, when Jesus took them a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread and break it. There was, what, about 12,000 people there? And them disciples, there were a few, few disciples there. They said, Lord, what are we, we going to do with these fellows? <laughs> what are we going to do with them? We just had dinner out there. There was enough out there for a log rolling. We had plenty of groceries, didn't we? All kind. How would you like to have fed 12,000 people with that? There's 12,000 people out there. Here come a boy with just a couple of loaves of bread and a couple of fish. <laughs> Jesus said, let me have it. And we call that Jesus feeding the 5,000. And that, that's all right. That's a good, good thought, isn't it? Jesus fed 5,000. But whenever he, whenever he took that bread and them fish, and he blessed it. And he broke the bread and the fish. Now, I don't know how he done it. What did he say then? 
He told them disciples, said, you feed them. You take it. I prepared it, now you take it. One night, the disciples fished all night long, hadn't caught anything. Come about daybreak, they looked up on the hill, and there was the Lord. Peter, he got all excited. Evidently, it was hot because he was naked, put on his clothes and jumped overboard and run up there. Jesus cooked breakfast for him. He called Peter off to the side. Peter had got to where he'd said, I ain't going to do this. I'm not, I, I, there ain't nothing to this. Casey said, he announced his call to preach. Well, that was good. That was good. <laughs> First sermon, we had a, had a sound system up here of sorts. Had time up here with a microphone on, long cord. He walked and walked and walked back and forth, walking back and forth. Little boy asked me, I was sitting over there. Little boy said, if he gets loose, is he going to hurt us? (laughs) 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 But he told, got got Peter off the side and said, Peter, you love me? Lord, you know I love you. He said, how about feeding my sheep? After a little bit, he said, Peter, do you sure enough love me? I'm paraphrasing, of course. Lord, you know I love you. How about feeding my sheep? After a while, he asked Peter again, said, Peter, you sure enough love me? Peter got a little aggravated. Lord, you know I love you better than anything. <laughs> Feed my lambs. I wonder what the Lord's saying to, to his disciples today. Is he talking to the church? Sure he is. But bring it down. What about you? What about you? Is he, is he not telling each individual of us? You go tell them. I prepared it. We've got we've got all of we that we need right here. This is the word of God. He's prepared it. He's told us to go into all the world with it. Take this book. It's the bread of life. Go into all the world with it. And as you go, and by the way, whenever he said go, that wasn't a question. He said, "Where as you go, as you go, you carry this word. Now, some people say, well, I can't talk in public. <laughs> you talk to somebody. Don't you? If ain't nobody but your wife or you. Husband, youngins, you ought to tell them what happened to you. Tell them the word of God. That's the bread of life. That's what will last. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. What do you say? Well, uh, by what authority? Jesus said, all authority is given to me. It's all mine. Now you take it and you go. Go ye. Let's put you in there. You. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them how they got saved. 
them disciples, whenever they took up that fish and them couple loaves of bread, they didn't know what to do with it. Jesus said, you feed them. You, you, you take it. You feed them. I prepared it. Now you take it. He's prepared the way. Now you take it. And you go with it. And all the world, tell everybody you think of about Jesus. You can tell him what he's tell him what he's done for you, what he's doing for you. Where where you reckon we'd be today? If somebody hadn't told us about the Lord. Runt's grandpa was preaching a revival meeting in Kenansville, Florida. When I was saved, I remember that. I don't remember the date. It don't make any difference. I know I'd just come out to Cal Pins that day. I know I'd said that I would never go back to that church again. But it did. The Lord touched my heart. Because somebody carried the word. Runt's grandpa was a great man of God. Fred Robbins. I don't know if you ever met him or not. Little duck-legged Yankee. But he sure could plow with the gospel plow. He'd tell you about Jesus Christ. I loved him. Matter of fact, I got to preach his funeral. What a blessing that was. Because I knew where he was. You carry the gospel. Go you and all the world. Wherever you go. You say, I can't go into all the world. Sure you can. This church right here, August 18th, 1959, I told the church, this church here, that I would take it as their pastor, 1959. That's a long time ago, wasn't it? Been here ever since. And by the way, don't plan on going nowhere except heaven. Somebody asked me where I'd move to. I'm going to tell y'all, like I told the church back years ago, I wouldn't move. Before I'd try to move what's in that parsonage, I'd burn it down. <laughs> My wife is piling enough junk in that house. Lord only knows what's there or where it is. So I don't plan on going nowhere. I'm going to stay here. We've got a good pastor, haven't we? Amen. He's doing a good job. Didn't think he'd ever amount to much, but I... He's a school teacher too. Do you know that? Pity them students. <laughs> now he's a principal. <laughs> I had a principal one time named a Swap. He beat me in the hand more times than I could say, tell you with a rubber hose. That's the way he whipped you. Beat you in the ham with a rubber hose. Had high blood pressure. I'd holler just to see them jugular veins jump out and thump. <laughs> we had a cannon plant. 
Don't ever go to a school that had a cannon plant. We did in St. Cloud. The FFA boys grew a bunch of stuff. We'd can it. That's the only way you get out of class. They'd say, who wants to go work in the cannon plant? I'd say, yeah, me. I'll go. Had me turning the handle on the canner. We was putting up beans one day. There was a lady that was feeding the thing. She asked me, said, how do you, well, what do you think of the principal? I said, I don't like that puzzle gutted rascal. He beat me in the hand with his rubber hose. She said, you know who I am? I said, no, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Swab. <laughs> I said, I'm gone. <laughs> so I skipped school that day. But it's been a pleasure. You are a great bunch to work with. 50 years. Believe it or not, I was here before Glenn Jones was. <laughs> I've been in here, what, two or three years for you? Two? I can't catch him in age, but... When he come here, or when he, Glenn was born, Moon's about the size of a quarter. <laughs> you can step across the Mississippi dry footage. But it's been a great time. A good time. And I thank you for this opportunity. That's about all I got.